Hello, everyone, and welcome to Political Paradigm. I'm Terry Ikumi. Today, my guest is the presidential candidate of the Action Alliance, Major Hamza Al Mustafa, retired. Welcome to Political Paradigm. Thank Major you so Al Mustafa. Much. It's my pleasure. Uh, before we go into the details of your campaigns and to talk about the elections generally, mm -hmm. let me point you to something more recent, and that's the budget presentation by the president. 20.51 trillion naira right. is the budget presented by the president to the right. National Assembly. Likely that figure will increase. Mm -hmm. If you become president in 2023, that's the budget which mm -hmm. you will be working with. Right. What are your thoughts on it? Numerous things come to mind. First of all, I have been following this country for decades and looking at uh, numerous genesis that is retarding Nigeria. Some of the issues some of us will come up with might not be palatable in the ears of some, but definitely it is in the best interest of Nigeria. If you are seeking for governance, realism, truths or facts in your hands are what you should be seen to work for or with for the common good of Nigerians. Uh, there is something called dirty budget politics. In countries, it are marked to either be retarded or be destroyed. Looking at the journey so far, there are numerous things people have not been talking about. And in Nigeria, evidently, as it is, Nigeria has been targeted for decades never to grow. We shall re-examine the contents, the figures, and the implementation. Here, I have seen and I listened to the summary, and we are still studying it. But to me, there is so much to be desired, and when time comes, if God Almighty bestow upon us the opportunity to preside over Nigeria, we will be very scientific, we will be very prudent, we will also be seen to be very strategic in looking at budget. You know, budget anticipatory measures from capital and recurrent, there are numerous politics involved. If you take, for example, 2022 budget, and you look at from January to this year, in retrospect, and look at the performance of the budget, you have so many big question marks from the institutions that you have and then from what it is earmarked for for Nigeria, you have a lot of big question marks. So it was decades and decades past. And to us, this country deserves much more in terms of budget implementation. It is one very hard knot to break, but we have the know-how. We look at uh, duplications and waste in spending. And we look at figures that never add up. And we look at the foolishness with which the executive arm of government is in most cases abused, where misrepresentation of facts and figures are presented, where performance of budgets are given in terms of percentages. If it is given in quarter A, when quarter B comes and you add it up, you might not end up seeing the same thing. So we have been particular in looking at it with eagle eyes to be able to know what the budget was meant for, its conception, preparation, and to the stage of implementation lies a head load for us to understand and to know that there are games. Once we come, we shall not continue with what we meet. And I will, I'm not coming to say because... So, so you would review the budget when you come Definitely, in. there are things we know and there are things we will bring to the fore. I will tell you this. If you examine Nigeria today, the presidency, the executive arm of government, and indeed the legislature are settled with two major problems. One, institutional failure. So when you have institutions that do not function, you do not have actually the right figures you desire to have for the country to work with. Dirty budget politics is a scheme where some certain foreign hands are involved where investors who do not care about your country comes to the fore, where ideas that are just there for the sake of infection also comes in. That's why if you, for example, take, say, 2021's budget and look at it from today 
and re-examine it from Nigeria's point of view. You will be ashamed and you will be worried about the percentages that got to be implemented. And that's the worry we have. So at the end of the day, you are busy rather than implementing a budget with an excellent intention, with a good vision. But at the end of the day, what you are doing is working backward. Now, promoting inflation, creating more hardship to your people, killing your currency and promoting your enemies who are sitting elsewhere and then having a budget that is performing for themselves. You yeah. are having institutions that are duplicated. We have done quite a hell, of more, a hell lot of work on this in knowing where we are as Nigerians. Maybe this is strange to hear from me. Maybe other people have not done, but we spend so many years working in knowing what the budget is all for, and that's how we got to know the scheme called dirty budget politics be having its way in Nigeria. You know, the implementation of the budget, as you mentioned, is quite mm. important. Mm. If you look at the 2023 proposed budget, right. uh, capital expenditure is just about five point something right. trillion. Right. Uh, and the budget has a deficit of right. 11 trillion. Now. Right. So when you look at that, so mm. many would question mm. what impact five point. I think five or five point mm. three trillion yes. naira would yes. have mm. on the population, especially because mm. releases for capital budgets in mm. the past years have not been up to par. Right. We've almost not had a hundred percent release across board. Right. But with a deficit of eleven point one trillion naira. Mm put side by side with mm. a capital expenditure mm. on the, of 5.3. Right. Would you borrow to fund this budget? No, I will not borrow. So how would you get the finance? Very good, for and it? I thank you so much for this question. To tell you the enormous work we have done, first of all, the previous budgets in our investigations, looking at it in retrospect, has presented to us duplications and waste. Waste of resources, waste in terms of servicing structures that are duplicated from numerous ministries. And these are the ones managing the economy. They are in the major ministries, and there are numerous of such that are there. Some came to, to the fore when the MDGs and the rest were created. So it became an avenue where budgets are meant for tiny little cells with four or five people. You see 80, 50, 90, 100 plus billions being budgeted for those. But if you sit down and look at what it is budgeted for, and look at the major department in other major ministries, you can understand the colossal waste going on. And people have enjoyed it and it is going on. Keep that aside. The issue of wealth creation from outside Nigeria is something new to Nigeria's mainstream, in mainstream understanding in governance. The issue of also curtailing West and creating resources from home, from at home. I will. Let me give you a tiny little example. God has blessed you with gas. Also, in the process of taking it, your environment is being, by the day, being destroyed. But this destruction, this seeming deaths, if you sit down and look at international market, if you have bothered to do your investigation in knowing what it is at the international scene, there are numerous op openings in the world who are desirous of what you consider as debts. We take 11% out of your gas deposit. That you have, the small one. We are not talking about the major 3.176 uh, uh, trillion. No, from what you have alone, for you to be able to augment get your structures adjusted, get people to be accountable, and get uh, institutions to be functional, you can draw from out of a certain arithmetic we have done. 11% of what you have is going to create $201 billion as at June this year. Every state can boast of itself, and you have all the industries you have. You can have employment. Employment issue is actually will be a bygone thing because there will be all industries can come. What we are talking about is making Nigeria to be productive, to be seen to be exporting rather than importing. And we have all it takes to be. We have all it takes to be the world market. So that's like a long-term goal. No. With regard to funding this 2023 no. budget, which Correct. you say yes. that you will not borrow for. R right, we will not. Where will you get the fund in such a short this, time? Already, I have just told you about 11% of something that is already here. The market is already there. It's a matter of negotiation. In terms of week, it is done. 
Remember, we're also going to curtail so much from the West that we knew of from the previous budgets. Add it up all together. Then definitely we are going to have resources to utilize in pulling Nigeria pending when the international negotiations is done. One month, two months. L months. Let me take you to something else that's contained in the budgets. Right. As its own mm. measure to address right. the ASU mm. issue. Right. The president has proposed 470 billion naira right. in the 2023 budget. Right. But he goes further to say that government cannot alone fund mm. uh, education. And he mm. believes that we should find more lasting ways to address this issue once and for all. Do right. you have an idea yes, I of have. how that can be I solved? Have. I have. I may give you a tiny little example. Some of the things bedeviling Nigeria today is security. The insecurity in Nigeria is not born out of social problems only. Then the question here is, for example, why Boko Haram? Who created Boko Haram? When was it created? 22 years plus today, from 1st November 1999. What was the reason? Solid mineral resources. What is there? Rare stones. One of the most precious stones on earth. What is the quantity in Nigeria? Where is it located? Is the market available? The fact that you have precious stones on your land, enough, you have enough money. Let's assume Boko Haram has, for the 22 years, the country is involved. I'm being bold to say so. That there are countries involved who created Boko Haram, diverted the attention of Nigerians and the leadership of Nigeria, inflicted maximum punishment in killing men, women, killing Muslims and Christians, putting all the bombs from all the records we have seen so far, shamefully. But I tell you, the aim of it is to take our resources. And I have evidence to show. We've been there. We've been to the Francophone countries between our borders and where these things are laid. Looking at Borno State, looking at Bauchi, looking at part of Yobe State, looking at Adamawa, looking at Gombe. Now, looking at Nigeria from that, from Francophone countries, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger, for example, in that plank, the 1,864 kilometers in our borders. If you examine the happenings here, the stories created, and the happenings from the other end, and the movement in terms of excavation, that is colossal amount of money in hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. And here we are, don't have. We even seek avenge to look for money to run an operation for us to bring security from where resources of Nigeria are taken away. It's for example, they are taking away 100, and you are busy looking for a Kobo to be able to maintain yourself. Well, you have hundreds of that going away. So this aside, the fact that we have also taken the pens to go around the world to know these precious resources have markets. And in the international markets, there are numerous bilateral or diplomatic economic movement or energy that can bring resources to you in your country. Then Nigeria ought not to be where it is. Let's assume the precious stone, the rare stones has finished. Look at the global business games going on today. Look at the richest man on earth. What is his background? Lithium. In all the 19 northern states, you have lithium. There are six southern states where you have lithium. And the market is readily available. Let's take one of the poorest states. Let's take Kebbi State. Five, that is, you have the worth of what is known to be in Kebbi State is 318 billion as at today's price, as at last month. 318 billion worth deposited. Kept it, state. Kept it, don't have any economic plan. They have nothing to fall back to other than agriculture. So this is a, this is a subnational problem more than a federal problem, isn't it? Yes, if now you have to, you have, first of all, that's why I always say, we don't know who we are. We don't know what we have. And then today, you cannot say I'm running a country, I'm running a country on daily routine or yearly routines. Where is our economic target? What do we want to achieve from now to 50 years? What is Nigeria's direction? The compass shows nothing other than daily routines. There is nothing as damaging as returning to a country seeing itself from a budget that comes year by year. Meaning, you have subjected yourself to those who initiated the doctrine let, and concept. Hold on, me, let, hold let on, me, let, and let, concept of what is called dirty budget politics. Dirty budget politics. I don't want you to lose. It's a I weapon. Sorry, I don't mm. want you to lose focus of the question. Right. The question is, 
a lasting solution to funding education I'm, I'm in the coming country to that. beyond I, I'm coming to the that. federal government. That's what I'm telling you. All I'm telling you is revenue, j uh, wealth creation from home. Wealth creation to augment that. From what can be said alone has. If you can say less, assume even that's all the country has. But besides, I tell you, all the 19 northern states have deposit of that. So you can now sit down and have an agreement in the same way we have had before on oil, adding a quota to take care of a particular issue from all our productions by the day. Dedicate this amount to that. You, by now, as a country on strategic terms, we're supposed to be looking at our education from now to 100 years plan. And you have all it takes to be. Dedicate it, have the money, dedicate, dedicated accounts, be involved in international trades. The money is evolving. You are making more money than that. For example, ASU in itself, it is established. You cannot do without them. Since they govern, the question is, if it is a body that you care for, why can't you give them oil allocations? Why can't you give them mining allocations? The accounts is to be monitored, dedicated, and controlled by government. The amount coming from there, the excesses coming from us, you do. Part of it you now do to manage your economy. There are 10 million and 10 ways to do. See, tying yourself to yesterday's routines, because it was, it was introduced by whatever previous governments before, to say that unless you do it this way, nothing works. But, but does, does this go to say mm. that you stand with ASU and you fault the federal government's handling of the situation, See, especially with mm. the recent um, uh, registration of mm. new education bodies to mm. sort of counter mm. ASU and the compulsion, mm. especially from the federal government that took ASU to court mm. to return to the classrooms. Mm. My brother, leadership provision is called sacrifice. It is not that fanfare. When the whole world, the whole country, as a, you as a leader, you have no right to not present your anger or promote your personal desire or ego to the fore. You are a manager. You are a provider. You are the one that is the torch bearer that beams your flashes of light against obstacles laid against the country. You are to carry all along. You have the patience. You have the qualities. You have the ability and the capacity. That's why you are given. But if you now come to be behaving like those you are leading, then it shows that you are not fit to be there. All I'm saying is the institutions or the ministries responsible for this should understand doing in-depth homework is incumbent upon them. If you cannot do in-depth homework to carry people along, you are misrepresenting the government. If ASU also, on the other hand, don't have anybody who interacts with them, Failure number one. Also is also, if they are also one way traffic from the hardship they see, then there is also to say that there are no gaps of, in terms of interactions between themselves, NUJ and Ministry of Education. Ministry of Labor and them, there is supposed to be synergy prior to them meeting together. In any matter in life, take note of this. There is one point called common grounds. In common grounds and in national interest, from patriotism, there are some certain percentages or points of agreement. You see, agree, and disperse. Intellectually, if God gives you the mind, is to sit down and look at your own totality of who you are and what you have. There are solutions that are in abundance. That's why I'm worried to say, why must, be seen, why must you be seen to be stereotyped, to be seen to copy yesterday's ways? A government that is not ready to create wealth that is not ready to be innovative. It's not a government that is ready to provide. Major Ham Mustafa, it would seem that you are very much interested in uh, education development. It right. would almost seem as though you have the blueprint. Right. But many would want to question, based on history in this country, mm. Nigerians would want to question why they would trust you with education, considering your educational qualification as well. Mm. You have uh, the first school living certificates, mm. the YAC and mm. the NDAC, which I believe is the defense mm. certification. Mm. So how, when you speak about addressing education up to tertiary level, mm. Mm. what sort of trust should Nigeria have in someone like you who does not have that qualification himself? I have. The fact that I have not presented that to INEC, it doesn't mean that I don't have. I have been building myself to be in prison. You know the number of higher courses I have done? To me, who is an intellectual? An intellectual is not a PhD holder. An intellectual is him 
who is by the day running and flowing with the wind of education, who is also running with time. And if you are running with the moon in terms of education, that is an intellectual. But if you have the PhD, you have papers. You have qualification that is just a carbon uh, uh, papers you kept. But you are running with the system and getting to know what the whole world is all about. You can are uh, creative and innovative. And looking at my background, with all sense of humility, I don't think there is any, with all sense of humility, any professor in any of these fields, forget security, that can come and look at me as somebody who doesn't know. Besides, remember, I have been part and parcel of Nigeria's governance for decades, and I have known these problems. So there are numerous evolution of numerous ideas, and you may be amazed to know that there are numerous ideas in our education, education sector that came from us. Let's, let's tilt away mm. slightly, mm. For, a, for, a, for at least for a while, right. from some of these issues and talk about politics and your personal history. Mm. It would seem that you would spend a great percentage of your time during this campaign trying to change a narrative. Mm. The average Nigerian has a perception of you based mm. on your history with former head of state, mm. uh, Sani Abacha. Mm. And as you try to transition from the military mm. to civilian rule, mm. are you concerned mm. about how you are perceived going into the election? I'm not concerned. Ask me why. Why? I'm a victim of perception or effect of propaganda over a period of time. The me that you see is the me that was. My records, I have served in Nigeria. We created numerous things for Nigeria. Our record speaks. I have suffered from propaganda for a period of 15 years with torture, trying to just call me a bad name. I mean, trying to give me a bad name. The essence was for me not to survive. You know, last uh, two years, in the year uh, 2019, that was when we discovered last, there were 18 attempts to kill me approved. As of 2013, when I came out, I was aware of 11 attempts and with the authority to kill me uh, because the essence of the game then was every blessed day, papers were paid, news, uh, magazines, uh, whatever they write in the evening, by morning, radios and television will echo. Just to give me that bad name so that there will be justification in killing me. And numerous events happen. I have not talked about that yet. The name they gave me is different, but the me that was is the me that is. And my background speaks for itself in terms of building this country from my great-grandparents and on what they did to Nigeria and what we are doing in building Nigeria ourselves. So power comes from God Almighty. Power is determined by God Almighty. Everybody has his individual, there is a collective destiny. If it is incumbent upon us, we are sure. We, are, we know who we are. We are facing the people with that sincere and clear mind to provide leadership that is totally different because we are going to demarcate from you, numerous routines in Nigeria. You have quite a lot of negatives attached to your name. And I think that going into the elections, you mm. have a lot of work to do. I say that because mm. Uh, attached to your name mm. are murder allegations, mm. alleged murder allegations, mm -hmm. which would include a uh, former vice president, mm. uh, Olusha Gunabasunjo. Mm. And then there are also concerns of drug trafficking allegations as mm. well. Mm. How do you intend to address some of these things? Because you say First that you all, are a victim. I, I thank you for this question. First of all, the issue of murder. I have been, I, I faced 14 judges in 15 years, and that has been cleared and there is no iota of it. People were contracted, the likes of Rogers, one Abdul Katako, were paid money, and they were taught what to say. They confessed that in a court of law. The fact that the media were denied to capture that is another thing, but we have the court documents in our hands. All we are waiting for is for the Supreme Court now. Supreme Court to now give a certain ruling so that we can now unveil all these documents for the world to see. It was a calculated game to now give, tarnish our names just to kill us. What, where was that, why were they ready to kill me? It's simply because of what I know. I found myself in a position where I refused to compromise Nigeria. And that refusal to compromise presented me as an enemy. And I'm the last person that will compromise Nigeria's well-being and welfare. That aside, the issue of drugs. Nobody ever alleged anything to do with drugs in my life. Nobody. There was a magazine called Rezo Magazine at what particular point in time? In 1999, 
after Abacha died, some people who believed that I refused them to take Nigeria's money after handing over Abacha's government, now went to Rezo Magazine and rated me as the sixth richest African with 600, with 600 billion dollars. Does that make sense? But it was in that magazine. And then that's why they said he must be trafficking in drugs. Otherwise, he cannot be the sixth richest African. I don't have money. I've never stolen 10 naira. I challenged two governments. Challenged Abtiku, uh, Salam Abakar's government. I challenged Obasanjo's government on that. They searched. They, I was ransacked by bigger international investigative agencies, police. My eyes and thumbprints were taken around the whole world. They saw nothing. But rather than telling the whole world my clean bill records, they were still kept it aside. So the disservice they have done, and the fact that I'm alive, I thank God Almighty. The fact that God Almighty has allowed me to come to the fore in itself is a big blessing that I'm thankful to God Almighty for. You know, this is a sen very sensitive matter mm. going into the elections because the perception, the narrative that was pushed out there was that you're a man to be feared. And while you try to clear that up, there are also mm. allegations of coup attempts. Mm. And it would raise the question, mm. why should Nigerians trust you with their democracy if you had attempted okay, coups? Okay, I, I tell you this, I tell you this. Let Ghani Fawahimi when he was alive, and let Dr. Fashion were sold an idea to believe that I was in prison. And even in that prison, only five of us were given the worst restriction in that prison. We were allowed to see only five people in a day with passport size photographs, with a picture, I mean, with addresses, telephone numbers, location of the person, signing and thumbprinting, and giving copies to SSS and all other security agencies. These are the only ones we are entitled to. But the worst arm robber in that prison was entitled to as many visitors as time permits. We don't even have, with all the services we rendered to Nigeria. The essence is to keep people away from us, correct? So here, with all the restrictions while we were there, not being allowed to see people, including our families with difficulties, seeing our lawyers, in most cases because uh, court has allowed our lawyers to have access to us. Even lawyers have restrictions coming. There are many senior ICANs involved. I know how much they suffer to have access to us, to talk to us on our rights. But yet, it was on such a situation that they now woke up and say, Mustafa was planning a coup. I was just arrested. I faced a panel, and I faced them one time. I was charged in 15 years. I was charged for a coup five times. And in one of the sittings, I asked the panel, I look at all of them, I said, who are those in my staging coup? What are the names of the spirit? Because there was a time I was underground on solitary detention. But in Nigeria, all magazines and papers have written that Mustafa was staging a coup. And I was brought before a panel. Well, to cut it short, the members of this particular one that I'm talking to you about, one by one, they exonerated themselves and told me that they were told to incriminate me. These are very senior people in the society today. So there was game for them to retard me, I mean, to tarnish my name and my image. They have done it. How is school conceived? How is school uh, done? But they have done it, and people believed what they saw. So at the end of the day, I am here. If I were to be afraid, if there were iota of me being involved in a coup yesterday, or the drugs you talked about yesterday, how come I'm here? How come I go to Nigeria from north to south, everywhere free? I drive myself alone. I go to anywhere alone. I have nothing to hide. There is nobody who will tell you I have cheated him or harmed him. Have you, have you, have you gone past whatever you went through for 15 years? Have you healed from it? He healing from it? It takes a long time to. So you're you required us therapy. It. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The fact that I was the firstborn of my parents, and the fact that we are not at war, and the fact that Nigeria was not divided, in 15 years, a serving military officer, being treated like an animal every day in chains, hands, neck, hands, uh, leg, and neck. I was in solitary detention for five years, two months. My parents were only allowed to see me twice in 15 years. And when I, they finally I got my freedom, God willing, I came and met an empty home. They were not there. You know the pains of that? I'm their, their best friend. You know what this psychological impact has? Yet, we always look unto God Almighty in what we say and what we do. And I have forgiven those who did. Ask me why. Why? 
every person in life, whether you know it or you don't know it, you're on trial. If you have freedom, you're on trial. If you lost freedom, you're on trial. If you're a rich man, you're on trial. If you're a poor person, you're on trial. If you're a leader, you're on trial. If you are being led, you're on trial. Any single thing, you are questioning me here. You're on trial because you have the initiative here. I'm on trial because I'm responding to your questions. And that is life. So the fact that it is God who permitted the trial in itself, I look onto God. I don't know what he desires to achieve. I know what he wants to do with me. So all I have to do is turn on to God alone. But those who persecuted me themselves, I wish and I pray they will now have the opportunity to come to the fore. Look at themselves, look at their ages, and look at what they have done, knowing fully well that I have forgiven them. I want them to come to the fore and tell the world the truth. That's all I want. Will that help with your healing process? Not my healing process. It will educate Nigeria. Well, have you healed? I am, because I trust in God Almighty. So here's why I ask the question mm -hmm. about healing. Yes. Should you become president right. in 2023? Nigerians really? would want to know mm -hmm. where the line will be drawn it's between actually fighting perhaps those who are involved in corrupt practices and vengeance. No. For me, the very moment I stepped out of prison, the media who covered my stepping out of the prison, the prison staff, family, many, many numerous well-wishers knew the first thing I did. I stopped. I prayed for those who persecuted me, those who wrote all the lies against me, those who subjected me to punishments, those who believed that their punishments also were not to allow me to be seen to be a normal person because of the nature of the punishment. I pray for God Almighty's forgiveness upon them and peace on Nigeria and for God Almighty to give us the wisdom to continue to be. They can, you can ask your colleagues, I did that. But it's a Herculean thing to do. I have done, and I have no reason to look back. I'm bigger than that. Yeah, it's very important for the country. Because yeah, sure. Because uh, in trying to move the country forward, I we can cannot never be dragged see. backwards. Vengeance is not my own, is not my upbringing, is not in my religion, is not in my belief. Love, affection, I have been an an advocate, and as I have been conversing all across, the issue of peace, unity in Nigeria, even as a very little toddler in the military as a lieutenant, numerous youth associations were created or registered by me. And I brought them up in this sense. That's why today, if there is trouble in the South, I can easily move to those associations and those people, the elders and the youth, I can talk to them. I moved to any part in the North, and I have been doing that. And this country, numerous these associations can attest to this. I have been doing this and sunk, and I'm not seeking for reward or to be eulogized before the media. God has seen and known what I have been doing. And there are numerous of such associations. I personally registered, and they are the ones that are providing unity in Nigeria but, today. But it would seem that that's suggesting that mm -hmm. you have broken, you have your basis in the South. Mm -hmm. But we will come to that. Now, right. we, what we see, mm -hmm. especially since the return to democracy, is former military officers mm -hmm. transitioning from the mm -hmm. military mm -hmm. to civilian rule. Mm -hmm. So my question is, in a democracy, what does a former military officer have to offer? Democracy, a military officer, is trained to be versatile. And it all depends on the strength of that person. It is personality evaluation issue. If you believe from the open programs that brought you up as a versatile person, primarily what is required, leadership qualities in an individual. The fact that Mr. A, as a civilian, comes to say, I am a politician, and I am promoting politics, and I want to be in politics. It doesn't mean he possesses the qualities of leadership, desirous of this country, that can have an impact in changing the country. But a military officer might have the qualities, and I'm not saying all the military officers have all the leadership qualities. Leadership qualities are numerous against what you see in many textbooks today, from 17 to 18 and the rest. I found myself in detention, and out of the difficulties of solitary detention, lately I came up with 46 strange qualities of leadership, and I'm writing on that. I have given that to one of the institutions in the UK on leadership, and they are working on it because I'm a graduate of that school since I came out. All right, so you know it is no secret that mm. Nigerian politics is largely mm. uh, money-driven. Mm. Now, in 15 years, mm. 
in jail, right? A prison, as you like mm. to call it. Mm. Uh, it was reported that you lost everything yes. and had to come out to start afresh. Correct. Now you're running for president. Correct. How are you able to survive, or how were you able to survive this entire time, and how do you intend to fund your we, campaign? We believe we have invested too much in interactions, in collaborative activities yesterday, today, and tomorrow. When it comes, we'll continue on our own passages. We continue to now understand that the goodwill we have established in Nigerians will continue to bring to us that confidence of support that is coming to us. Already, for the journey thus far, coming before the primaries to the primaries up to this point, is not me. It's our friends and brothers displaying goodwill. Even my coming here is goodwill. I didn't drive myself here. I am brought. Let me draw your attention to something. You're quoted to have said mm. that not what Nigeria needs now is leadership. Correct. We have to get out of where we are, and people will come and use the name of religion to say because he's a Muslim, he cannot be this. Because he's a Christian, he cannot be this. So my question to you is that from what you see in the political atmosphere, mm. do you fear that religion could be a factor in the 2023 presidential election? Yeah, definitely. Why do you I say fear. so? Ask me why. See, at every given time in the life of a country, there are seasons. When the season demands that you are not up to that point where leaning on a particular religion might bring friction or suspicion, or build mutual suspicion from even within your party and without, then the question is, sit down at the beginning and do what is called templating and determine your go areas and no-go areas in the interest of the country, in the interest of peace and security, in the interest of acceptance of the country. Anything that will bring friction in your journey to leadership is called no-go area, avoid it. That is maturity, that is understanding the country. Where you become insensitive to the feelings and understanding of the people, then definitely it shows when tomorrow comes and you are settled with leadership. A leader, though, is expected to take tough decisions for on behalf of the people. It, decisions might not be popular, but religion, ethnic issues cannot be seen to be played with. And if for whatever reason you have to go that way, then you have to spend a lot of time, a lot of time to educate to make presentations to all segments of the society. You carry religious leaders of both sides. You carry ethnic groups of both sides. You carry national stakeholders of both sides and say, for these reasons, this is the way I'm going. Please guide me. That's why I tell you, we are making visitations to tap from the tower of wisdom and knowledge of our elders without fear. Let me ask you this question, which is related to that and the 2023 general elections. As I have done with other presidential right. candidates, right. I'd like to draw your attention to the peace accord right. which you signed right. and question whether you believe that it will have an impact mm. on the elections next yes, year. Yes, it will have. The fact that intermittent uh, interactions minus peace accord alone Intermittent interaction, the fact that all candidates met together and shook hands is a big plus. You have seen the chemistry. We interacted with one another. Some, it was at that point, I saw some exchanging numbers. And the fact that you talk to candidate A, it is a tool to avert the unforeseen of tomorrow. So to me, there should be larger forums where candidates and their running mates and their party chairmen can come together to begin to talk on something called the Nigerian project. The, uh, we, we are brothers and sisters. The fact that we are in different parties, it doesn't mean. The fact that we are looking for leadership of Nigeria, it doesn't mean we should be seen to be preparing for war. That is shallow mindedness. That is disservice. If preparing for election is to prepare for war, that is an, act, an action left for animal kingdom. Not for human beings who are civilized, who are cultured, who are respected, a country highly respected like Nigeria, where we should come and know that it doesn't matter how much money you have. 
It doesn't matter how poor you are. When the opportunity comes your way, destiny is rolling. And at the end of the day, somebody must emerge. And when he comes, in understanding God Almighty and knowing that he determines tomorrow, when he comes, thank God Almighty, key in with the person. Show your loyalty to the country by supporting the person or the leadership of the day. <laughs> that is the way we see Nigeria, and we are advocates of peace in this direction. We are building patriotism to embellish that so that we are enveloped by patriotism, fear of God Almighty. And looking at the motto of Nigeria, unity and faith, peace and progress. Anything outside this for certainly there are people who are creating something. Once you see a person who loves himself more, who cares for himself, who think about himself and nothing else outside that, he is a liability, he is a problem to leadership of your country. Let's talk about something that uh, I believe you're an expert in, security. Now, as a former chief security officer to a military head of state, mm. why do you think that the security situation under civilian rule mm. has worsened? Mm. And how will your experience come to bear if you become president? It's a big question. It has simple answers. But every of the answers are bitter pills in the mouth and the soul of those who initiated our problems. The build-up and development of insurgency in Nigeria, and that is one peculiar thing that Nigerians ought to sit down and determine. Why was Nigeria having an insurgency problem? When was the build-up started to achieve what? And if you allow the trend to continue, where is it taking your country to? The likes of those equating Nigeria with, I will tell you boldly, is Afghanistan and Congo DRC, then Nigeria. It is from the God-given resources, and you can never detach. Once you bring out honey in the open, you cannot complain of having flies. Nigeria's honey is in the open. Flies that are poisonous are all hanging around to fetch they will end up contaminating it, and the owner might not use it properly. In security in Nigeria, there are numerous approaches to contain it. I have spoken in numerous fora, and to say that there are peculiar ways of getting it done. And the way it is today, the present structures of your armed forces, of your Joint Intelligence Bureau of Nigeria, the way you have, the paramilitary you have established, cannot capture the scope of the wide front of the threat facing Nigeria, and that is clear. You have to sit down and look at Nigeria from north to south, from all the uh, six zones of Nigeria, and understand that from your waters to the northern north, you understand that there are some sp special, special roles that might be seen to be governing Nigeria in providing effective security. That's one secret we have. From your river Niger to river Benue, from the roles and expected of you to do concerning security, from determining restructuring your ministries, including the Ministry of Water Resources, leaving the ministerial status to now to come under security in terms of control of what is called movement security control in Nigeria, something new, in bringing technological support to the armed forces and to the new forces we intend to create. There are new forces that will man our shallow waters. There are additional roles for our Navy. There are additional roles for our military. There are additional roles away from police and from the military on the land. There are also special roles in your forestry, mountains, aerial view security, and your borders. There are technological deployment working with physical in terms of your borders to the hinterland. We, people have forgotten, created the six zones of Nigeria. And people don't know why, and are not utilizing the reasons why we created the six zones. We created it, if you can remember. The reason is why. And it has to do with containment 
of the insurgency in itself and easier security management of Nigeria on one side. Easier for administration, there's a reason for the six zones. Easier for us to call, fall back to our history, to our culture yesterday. Easier to understand that from the zones, Nigeria can, looking at agriculture, manage what is called dirty fertilizer politics so that you can have maximum production against what we have today. You know, the type of fertilizer we have been using for the decades has chemicalized our soil. We have destroyed ourselves. We are not looking at that. You have a ministry, you have security apparatus, but we are not doing what we are doing. When tomorrow comes and you discover more money, then you realize that you have allowed liabilities coming to the country and you can no longer feed yourselves, but we are moving on that direction. So Nigeria should be put on a template in every sector and get it dissected and create programs that will run concurrent. It's bigger than just the fanfare of coming to talk to do it. No, it's a Herculean thing. It's a serious labor work. It's a serious brain work. It's a serious mobilization of gifted people from, different, from numerous sections with effective management of all of them so that every single month will have a quality time of management, of production, and of direction. Anything outside this, we are wasting time in providing leadership. No, in the last seven years, right. at least over eight, over eight trillion naira has been budgeted for defense right. in this country. Mm. There is no corresponding result mm. as far as analysis go. Mm. Mm. Now, as an intelligence expert, do you su subscribe to the narrative that we have not funded our defense appropriately, or are, they get us, are these monies getting into the wrong pockets? There are two answers to this. Evidently, at the beginning of the management of insurgency of Nigeria, it was a mixed security and political interest management because we have done our homework. At the beginning, there were more negative stories of describing the threat, giving it a reason for why funds should now be released. But at, in this real sense of it, money released was meant for personal or political interests of some certain people. Most unfortunately, we have done taking the pains to go back into that. We look at allegations by some people from even within the system then and say, whatever they said was wrong, now we should go back to look for answers we have. And it is disturbing and most disheartening. Lives were lost of precious gallant officers, gallant soldiers who have, been, who have, who have perished out of desire to provide solutions. But they do not know the larger dirty politics governing what they did. Money was spent. So in a nutshell, because it's a long thing, the amount of money budgeted for, the result you have seen, is evaluated and known by everybody, including those involved. What here is all that matters is patriotism and the care to keep Nigeria in peace and intact. The money budgeted for, if it were to be from the structures I told you from, expanding the network, protecting your natural resources, getting the military to play its role, territorial integrity of Nigeria, then having some other segments who are effective, who are well equipped, who have a new doctrine governing every portion of Nigeria will allow every Nigerian to crisscross Nigeria to have data kept, to know what is called security data movement of every person, strangers and citizenry, all for the common good of people. But I tell you one thing, in Nigeria, there are two things I have seen. The desire to spend given excuses for it and the inability of the intellectuals to ask questions out of fear. On another hand, is Nigerians taking everything for granted because they do not want restrictions? The name of security, the other name of security is restrictions that you may not like for your common good, for the safety of your country, for the safety of your environment. And I tell you this, the intellectuals in Nigeria who are quick to condemn a government if they see security activities for their common good. There are types of security, passive and active. But when you get to most, let's say, all G7 countries, a Nigerian with whom you have just visited Nigerian airport and about to take off, you see rowdy sessions, you see shouting and arguments. You are on board that aircraft, but the moment they announce you to land in five minutes on that destination, destination country, you will see Nigerians adjusting and complying. 
complying with order even before you land. And soon after you land, Nigerians will not see that rowdy session. They will not be fighting. They will queue. They will behave as a gentleman or a gentlewoman. The question you ask yourself is, why? Because the law works. Because that restriction, that broad order, is what we don't have. We're almost out of time now. But since you really question mm. the funding for the security agencies and right. where the monies go, right. should you become president tomorrow? Yes. Would you prosecute those whom you believe could be responsible for diverting the funds? Once we get there, we will be dri driven by patriotism and love of peace and security in this country. The records we shall see will determine what we do. But we'll be driven by love of this country. We'll be driven by patriotism. I was in the military. Just the, the question is no, more direct. I know. The reason no, why the question no, is direct I also is, know. No, I just one second. The reason why that question is direct, mm. because mm. there are concerns with regard to how we fight corruption mm. and the importance of making sure that people who fail this country pay dearly mm. for it. And those who, to a great extent, the people who are culpable of things mm. like this are mm. very highly placed, yes. high in the military mm. and high in the political space. How bold would you be I am, to go after these people? If you are talking of boldness, God willing, I'm not busting. Boldness in rendering service for Nigeria was, first of all, what fetched the persecution I went through yesterday. Because I don't know how you can ask me to paint white, black, and to paint black, white. Many of those who believe they hated my gods were the ones that punished me and called me names. In Nigeria, I believe the even institutions, the two of them primarily, managing our security, uh, corruption issues in Nigeria are ill-equipped. They are too small. They are not organized properly. A situation, this is the way I see it, where you call a rabbit to be the chairman of arrested lions, you know is semantics. The rabbit will be running around the animal kingdom, but the lion will be sleeping the way it wants, and nothing will happen. So we have an understanding of two new agencies to come on board, where it will swallow these two, and it is bigger. It will go along with our economy. In Nigeria, I give you this insight, even though I don't want to be given some certain leakages with the secrets we have for Nigeria. You don't have national economic intelligence agency or a commission. You also do not have national electronic agency, a management of your economy and determining data of corruption. In terms of management, your domestic activities, international trade, movement of your resources, activities in your banks, activities with your central bank, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of National Planning, and in that understanding, what they do with your resources you don't have. How come you don't have the seeming structures and you want to relate with the international community that you can now drive? Who do they communicate with? So once they come, they don't have relevant agencies they are working with in today's modern world. How can you manage corruption? So you have to reset the country first. Fair there well. is a lot of restructuring to do if you must contain uh, security. I'll give you one last one, one last one. The issue of purchase of equipment. Companies are known, amount of money it was bought for, at what cost did it arrive in Nigeria, the age of the equipment, the authority that bought it, the connivance between agencies and arms are things we know. We have done a lot of investigation. Even from the black market? Yeah, even, from, even, even, from, and, uh, even in the black market, there is what is called the hidden market. Mm. I'd like to get your thoughts on June 12th being mm. designated, as, designated as the new Democracy Day. And this question is because of the history you share with late MK Abiola for Correct. working for General Sani Abaja. Correct. You must have heard a numerous things I have talked about leadership MK Abiola. In political settings in a country, at every given season, or at every given season that came in the past, there are challenges before leadership. And when it comes, it is what the leadership determines of it that will come out of it. I believe till this moment until tomorrow, between leadership MK Abiola, General Abacha, General Abdul Salam Abubakar, General Ibrahim Badamasi Babangira, the leadership of his party, there are so much that Nigerians don't know. I said this to an international community that came when he was in detention in 1995. I said it to them also when they returned in 1997. 
and we need to get this open. And that's why on numerous occasions, I gave him numerous things he wrote. Himself and I have discussed so many things. One of the greatest disservice done to Nigeria were those documents I gave him, a Quran, a Bible, and A4 papers, over almost one and a half reams. He was writing things on a daily basis. Whosoever visited him, whatever happened to him, on one hand. On the issue of evaluating his part, uh, inv I mean, involvement in politics, his businesses, his international contacts, were things he was keeping, and I was assisting him to keep. One of the saddest things is the fact that where were these things kept away from his family or from the domains for Nigerians to dissect? It's a very, very important thing. So to me, if a government has taken decision of eulogizing him and adopting a policy in now uh, crowning his efforts with June 12th, yes, it's the decision of government of the day. And whosoever is in leadership occupies a position with information at hand with which they have taken decisions. Major Hamza Al Mustafa, I'd like to thank you very thank much you. for thank this you, conversation. Thank and you. like I would say to every political, every presidential candidate that I speak with, I wish you well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. It's you. a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure is thank mine you. as well. Thank you. Well, that's Political Paradigm. Thank you very much for your time. I'd like to remind you that you can catch this episode and others on YouTube. Simply search Political Paradigm or go through the website, channelstv.com. I am Terry Ikumi. Goodbye. <laughs>